the more titles, the better. <laughs> more words. Yes, exactly. So, um, World Business Chicago really is a, a public-private, not um, non-profit partnership that drives inclusive economic growth and job creation, supports businesses, and promotes Chicago as a leading global city. Now, between you and I, I get what that is, but let's break it down for people. Okay? Absolutely. Awesome. So, Kyle, welcome to the show, and thank you so much for saying yes. I am so happy to be here. I appreciate the invitation and like watching the other live shows. This is such a cool format. So thank you for letting me come and talk Aww. about cool, what's happening with our world economies as we come out of the global pandemic and look ahead. Fantastic. Uh, it's great to be here. So yeah, there's a lot of words in my title. <laughs> world Business Chicago has a very uh, broad scope. So essentially, World Business Chicago is the city of Chicago, Illinois' economic development agency. Mm. Our mission is to attract inclusive investment in jobs, support businesses, and then promote the city of Chicago around the world. Um, we are structured as a 501c3 public-private nonprofit. So really all that means is that our model for doing business is having both a public stream for our operation and a private stream that helps us accomplish our mission. We have been around since the early 2000s wow. um, and have a really unique feature in that we are chaired by the mayor of Chicago. So our current chairman of our board of directors is Mayor Lori Lightfoot. And so we, with that leadership at the top, we work very closely with Mayor Lightfoot, her administration and her economic development team to bring about an economic future for Chicago that's both equitable and allows everyone in Chicago, all of our neighbors, to tap into that growth. Yes, I love Chicago. Chicago is very fun. Like, yeah. there's not, you know, I, I'm relatively new, you know, to yeah. the city, like to... Yeah, yes, I, I moved here from Arkansas, so I'm still learning a lot. And what I see is the energy. There's a kind of energy, there's an upward mobility, there's activity, like one thing I realized is that people are so open to new things. Like, you know, it's like trade with Africa, okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that, that newness like, is at the very heart of what is in the fabric of Chicago City's DNA. If, you know, it, the city was incorporated in 1834, but the defining feature of our early history was the Great Chicago Fire and mm -hmm. it was cow burning two thirds of the city down. And from those ashes came skyscrapers, came the Columbian Expedition. Um, and you can read all about that with the uh, Devil in the White City book. But it's been, the newness has always been part of that because it is, we've always kind of just developed ourselves and redeveloped ourselves and reimagined ourselves. And so for you to see that and see, oh, wow, look at like trade with Africa and the city being receptive to that. I think it's just part of how we view commercial opportunities as a city. Right. You know, the, the other thing that we have an opportunity on, and that's why you and I engage, is the fact that everyone, most people around the world know Chicago, mm -hmm. but not everyone has experienced it. In fact, 2019, mm -hmm. when the um, Commissioner for Trade, Ambassador Muchanga, the Commissioner for Trade at the African Union, when he visited at my invitation from um, Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, you know, after he gave his, his keynote, he was like, Tony, this is my first time to Chicago. Can somebody show me around? That took me back because people know Chicago, but I think a lot of the global leaders, they visit Washington because of diplomacy much more. And part of the work that I do now is, is getting more executives, business executives, um, political leaders, you know, you know, saying, you know, check us out. Like, you know, check <laughs> us out. Um, I also remember last year I was on a, a show, a live show with some government officials in Kenya. Um, and this particular leader is in charge of the movie industry in yeah. Kenya. And he was like, Tony, we're trying to connect with Tyler Perry and Hollywood. And I was like, mm, have you ever thought about Chicago? I was like, Chicago movie? I was like, yeah. 
so I think th there's an opportunity there. The good thing is that everybody knows Chicago. I think breaking down what those opportunities are, I think that's where the opportunity really lies. So something else you want to dive deeper. Can you tell us a little, a little bit about Sister City? What does yeah. that look like? Yeah, so Chicago, within World Business Chicago, we've got uh, three economic missions, areas that we focus on uh, to kind of fill that broad overview. Um, I head up our business development and global strategies team. And so within that work, we work to help businesses around the world um, understand what makes Chicago a compelling place. Mm. You're exactly right. The number of times people know Chicago, but haven't necessarily been here, it's pretty much almost every day I have the conversation in some thread. Wow. Most of the reference point, and I don't know how much this had to do with last summer's cultural phenomenon, The Last Dance, and the mm. Michael Jordan documentary, but most people know it either from Michael Jordan, Oprah, or President Obama. Mm. They don't know it for the economic opportunities. And what we hear and kind of where our mission to promote the city comes in is because you think of DC because of the government and that being the capital of our federal system. You think of New York City and Wall Street and being the center of commerce. And then San Francisco is really the center for tech and innovation. But within all that, you've got that here in Chicago. It's we are the second largest financial center in the country. Mm. We've got 80 consulates in the city of Chicago. So the we're the Midwest's government capital. Um, and then we've got a fast growing innovation scene. So we're really the best of all three. And mm. able to travel and have people come to the city and see it, they're floored because it the skyline, the lake, the just the weather all kind of speaks for itself. So a big part of what we do at World Business Chicago and that I'm responsible for is making sure we tell our story and connect with mm. businesses around the world, other governmental leaders. And one of the incredible strengths that we have as a city is we've got 29 sister cities around the world. It's the most diverse and abundant sister city network of any U.S. city. Um, wow. It's recent when we added was uh, Sydney, Australia in 2019. But we go Australia, China, Japan, three in Africa, South America, um, and then North America and European continents. And so we have those relationships that we've been really able to build on. In addition, we've got six international economic development agreements that mm. are centered around trade and investment between Chicago and then I'll start kind of break this down hopefully a little bit. Four of the economic agreements are between London, Tel Aviv, Mexico City, and Paris. And then we are really fortunate that we've got two first of their kind agreements between the city of Chicago and the governments of Japan and China. Wow. So we really are focused on how we can get our name out there, educate the pop the global populace on what the opportunities are in Chicago and help connect our residents, my neighbors, our neighbors to other people in the around the world to break down the barriers, help everyone kind of understand our worlds better. Yeah. Wow. That's incredible. <laughs> And, and for me, even in practical ways, let me, I like to just give my experience. I remember I received an invitation to New York. The vice president of Nigeria was visiting. So the consulate was like, Tony, we need you come. Well, I got to the airport and I missed my flight. Like, like that <laughs> and i was like oh no i can't afford to miss this flight to new york and i went to the the counter at the airport and the lady there was like oh don't worry there's a flight from chicago to new york every hour i was like okay we'll just put you on the next flight so that was my you know the connectedness of chicago you know in terms of transit another experience which is just fun I used to live in Arkansas. For people to fly there was like, you gotta like, you know, you gotta want to get to Arkansas. Like if you're going there, like you've got to want to be there. Exactly, <laughs> and we've we've had that. We've had that. Where I held my first um, engagement, which is now in the fourth year. I held the first one in Arkansas, and people did go from <laughs> you know like two flights and two you know. So I know, I know what that means. But this is even more personal. My sister, my sister is based in London. And she was like, oh, now that you're in Chicago, you see me more often. <laughs> <laughs> like, Arkansas is like, 
mm, maybe but chicago is like oh there's a direct flight and she she actually spent 2019 um thanksgiving she spent it with me here in chicago she was like yeah it's so easy now for me yeah. to come visit you it's one of the best benefits um ibm does a global uh site selection or plant location survey every year mm. so for seven consecutive years chicago was ranked as the number one city in north america for foreign companies to invest wow one of the biggest reasons they tell us they come here is because we have the connectivity back to their wherever they're we're coming from if it was from asia if it was from europe it was from africa or south america they could easily get back there to meet with their headquarters or a lot of times go back and see their family that they the leadership is left behind to come and make this business opportunity and so the airport is like o'hare we talk about o'hare a lot uh, but we have Midway too that helps add the additional capacity. So our connectivity, we're the number one most connected airport in the country, but then third number third most connected in the world. So it's not an understatement to say you can get anywhere globally yeah. from Chicago. Right. And I think it also translates to the event scene mm -hmm. because I can definitely tell you it's it's a lot more easier to attract travelers hopefully you know knock on wood when covid is over we can get people traveling back but i i mean because i've done it elsewhere whereas for example when i held my event in arkansas just working with journalists one of the questions that was published in this national newspaper was uh why do you want us to come to bentonville a city we've never heard of before right which I then had to sell that city, even though it's the old world's like come from Walmart. Yeah. What did you still realize the attractiveness of such a city? I never got such questions when I said <laughs> come to Chicago. Like, oh, yes, we'll be there, right? Yeah, yeah so, we'll be there. We'll be there. So I think even within the event scene is very vibrant. I mean, before COVID, obviously, like events in Chicago, they're like big, like as big as you can make it, right? Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Like in terms of how attractive it is to visit? Yeah. Uh, just the, the, the mind blowing bigness of the event brings up the International Manufacturing Technology Show or IMS, mm. which happens every two years in the even year. So in 2020 would have been the most recent one. That takes over our huge convention center called the McCormick Place. And it's a workout, like just <laughs> trying to go from one end to the other. I think you get about half of your steps in. The, you get mm. a thousand steps just trying to go from one end. And it's just like wall to wall packed with the manufacturing technologies of today. And it's not like a local or regional or even national. It is there are pavilions like pavilions for the Chinese. There are pavilions for every country that's out there. And you just, it, hearing you say that just brought back that memory. Yeah. But then it, because of Chicago's location in the middle of the United States, you end up being an attractive destination because it's easy to get into from the airports. It's convenient for the East coast and the West coast and the globe to come here. And so you see all these industries start to come. And one of the, I think exciting things that you're starting to see in the newspapers is the confirmation that these events are coming back, that conferences are starting to work out the hybrid model as we're calling it kind of the, we'll do some in person, but we'll also have some virtual components and that, that energy that really is just permeated throughout the summer in the city of Chicago and fall will be here, that it's coming back and that maybe there is a little bit of light at the end of this pandemic tunnel. Absolutely. I, I know for, for me, I actually moved 100% online. I, I have a background in technology, even though, you know, I mean, I was also impacted. My events had to move um, virtual, but I tried to make the best of it in terms of just going 100% digital and just assuming that for the next one year, this is the way it's going to be and just making the best of it. And I've seen some advantages Mm -hmm. um, it, it's a lot easier to pull things off. <laughs> I that's I, I for all the all the pain and the stress and like the hurt that as a global community we've lived through over the last thirteen months, longer for other parts of the world. There are I, 
I, I was called the ever optimist yesterday and I totally accept and buy into that. There are rays of light that are coming through those dark clouds. Mm. We've never been able to connect with as many international people that we did last year. And when you think mm. of the ability, oh, actually, let me say that. When you think that this pandemic wasn't just an issue contained to the continent of Africa or to the North American continent, that it was a global pandemic. And as a world society, we all had to learn to speak Zoom or Teams or any number of these other web-based meeting applications. We've been able to become closer as a society uh, mm. in, in ways where if you were to come to that big manufacturing trade show, well, that's airfare, it's lodging, it's uh, shipping for your products and your booth. Now you're able to connect on person and it's a subscription app. And through our work, we were able last year to engage in, I think, seven virtual summits with our sister cities and our MO economic partners to keep those relationships strong, to talk about trends and innovation and mm -hmm. policy and uh, industry that we were curious about in ways that had there not been a pandemic, it would have taken longer to form those relationships and make wow. them. And so the pivot, the innovation that we've all had to live through, I kind of like it. And <laughs> now is how do we keep the accessibility and the cost effectiveness as part of what we do as a business community moving forward? Yes. And that's true. And I see it a lot as well, where, a lot of the um, stakeholders that we engage with, you can access them. Like before COVID, you couldn't access them online. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of travel, even to find them, like maybe the minister of these or the ambassador of these, like you, you can easily access them. And I think COVID also forced them to pay attention to the digital economy <clears throat> because my background, digital trade has been around for years. Yeah. In terms of even the system I helped um, implement and build at Walmart before before I left build Nazaru, we were already doing live auctions and trade, like everything was live already, like in terms of global trade, right? So I think COVID also opened up a new opportunity to um, business leaders and political leaders on the continent to, to kind of shift to a new way of working. Yeah. that is heavily digital and i teach i teach that in some of my master class to say um digital disruption what does it mean for africa you need to really really pay attention because <clears throat> there are opportunities being captured online that you're excluded from if you're not online <laughs> mm -hmm. <clears throat> excuse me it, excuse me it was, you're able to with the online and through your platform and our relationship the access that Chicago's had, the relationships we've been able to form with Africa, with the government leaders, with the businesses that are growing, um, all of it, like a lot of it's e-commerce based, which is where our markets are heading. I grew up, you know, I grew up in a main street. I grew up in a uh, small uh, Midwest or Illinois town. Um, kind of imagine like the quintessential suburban farm town, stereotypical America. And that was my awesome hometown. And I got to be part of the fabric of that community because my family owned a flower shop and gift shop. And even mm -hmm. businesses evolved more where my mom prioritizes their uh, Instagram, their Facebook marketing. We're on an e-commerce platform. Wow. The more that our businesses around the world can take advantage, the better we can mm -hmm. and create more commerce for each other. Exactly. And you talked about some of the work we're doing. Let me bring that up. So this also was one of the reasons, the Trade with Africa Network, right? Mm -hmm. The reason that was built was we actually started working on it before COVID. Yeah. What happened was every year I'll bring people together. They'll fly in from Canada, U Europe, Africa, different states in, in, in the US, and they will meet, you know, their own type of people like you know, people thinking alike. And then the events will happen two and a half days and everybody would return. And part of the feedback was towing. How do we all stay connected? How do we all grow? Because a lot of the opportunities that we are exploring, it's not a one-time connection thing. Okay. You're, you have to work on it for months. You have to stay connected. You have to go back and forth. Um, I remember it's also within the buying, selling community, 
just because you, you've now been connected to a buyer doesn't mean the buyer is now buying from you. The buyer has questions. You have to respond. You have to showcase. It, it, there's a lot of going back and forth that happens over a period of time. It could take six months. It could take a year, depending on how big the deal is. So people needed a space. And it all started on my phone as a WhatsApp group. <laughs> yes. Of course. <laughs> Just holding people together. Yeah. Because when, when you hold them together, things happen. You know, it's like people are talking, people are exchanging. Even simple things like, Tony, I'm going to Egypt. Who can I connect with? I'm like, oh, yeah, we have a member. Ty, do you, are you able to host this person? And that, that happens. Oh, I'm going to Kenya. Who, you know, Tony, you know, who can I connect? Oh, yes, you can talk to this person. He has a TV network. Both of you are in media. Things happen, and then the next thing on social media, I'll see them taking pictures together. <laughs> so that connection, my ability to connect people played out in small ways, but now in big ways. So we've moved it to the Trade with Africa network, and magic happens on this platform. Now, the other thing people don't know, I actually also do business coaching on this platform as well, because this is what I realized, that as we bring people together, they're now in proximity, so they have access, market access. What's missing now is understanding the rules of engagement. Yeah. Like, people are just talking over each other. <laughs> <laughs> there so are I'm, those days, as a, like, as a member of the network, there are those days when it's just rapid fire of threads coming through my inbox. Yeah. But I, that just always, to me, has been like, wow, there is a lot of enthusiasm and activity and desire happening on this platform. Yes, and I've also had, like there's a member from United Nations Conference on uh, Trade and Development, yeah, UNCTAD, and he had to tell me, said, Toyin, so many people are reaching out to me, can you please help me organize this? <laughs> like, <laughs> I want to respond, but they are coming at me so fast. Is there a way we could just maybe set up a meeting? you know, meet me, then I can help address their questions. I was like, uh, I'll figure that out. So I also know that I want to thank people that are making themselves available because it's like a direct DM. Like you can actually reach people you cannot reach before. <clears throat> you have access to people you, you wouldn't, I mean, to take you a couple of flights to even get them. That's even if they respond. And then there are some quiet people. A lot of politicians, they're very quiet. They're just observing, but they're there. Um, so anyway, so that's a platform we're growing now. And I, as I'm also getting ready for the next edition of the Trade with Africa Summit, it's going to be hosted there. So yeah, I'm so excited. Like people wonder, <laughs> doing it's dark out there. Why are you so excited? I'm like, mm -mm, you're not mm. part of the, com if you're part of the conversations I'm part of, there's no way you will not be excited. Like on Saturday, I'm part of like a two hour conversation with one of the government leaders. And she's saying, you know, I need this, I need that. Like, there's just so much going on. Um, and I see a lot of the leaders, they just need some type of support. I, I don't know if you're seeing that as well, that um, finally people are like raising their hands and saying, we need help. We need some type of support. I think that's a huge part of what World Business Chicago does. And it's the second part of our mission is to support businesses. And we often talk whether it's a local company, a national company looking in Chicago, or international, you know, the guiding the guiding influence in my economic development background has been growing up in a family-owned business and really, you know, sitting at family dinner tables because my grandparents, so just a little background, my grandparents bought this flower shop in 1972. Mm -hmm. And their children that were 10 and 8 at the time started working for them, grew up and are now running the business, and then my family was the next generation or my generation was the next one to come up. And um, it was really interesting to have a mom and then mom also be boss and just be with her all, all the time. <laughs> as much as I love her. And if she sees this, she'll probably pull my ear. <laughs> so I got into economic development. And one of the reasons why I love this profession. And I think when I think about what we do and how we support these conversations is there's a whole big world of partnerships, resources, and ecosystems that when you put yourself in the business issue, it's hard. It's, they've got, you've got a business to manage and grow and deal with employees, the whatever your product service is. Um, and then add in the fact that you've got family and family and personal responsibility. Now, where are you supposed to find those resources? 
And then now add in the layer that, and this is what I always think about internationally, is if my parents and family wanted to open up their flower shop on the African continent, where would you start? How would you mm. that? How would you help them find that small town feeling that they've like is so part of why we've been successful in Africa? And so for us, it's always okay. What do we do that adds value to your conversation? You're going to give us 30 ish minutes to talk. How are we going to make sure that that time was warranted and that your business, which is a for profit, can be able to get that word that matters most a profit from working with us? And so that's connecting them to one of Chicago's many innovation hubs, if that's connecting them to a trade group that's in Chicago or in Illinois, so that they get a sense and they can start to build up your big word, a network here in Chicago. For me, that's always been the key thing is if we can help them get a network, that helps them understand the opportunities in Chicago, yeah. helps them make a decision to come to Chicago sooner, and then ultimately create a job for a Chicagoan that didn't have that opportunity before. Yes, yes. So let's dive deep to yeah. understanding like the makeup of Chicago. What sectors, you know, tourism. <clears throat> we've talked about movie, you and I, we've talked about the movie industry. Like, can you unveil that for those who would watch this? Like, yeah. what trade and economic opportunities exist? So Chicago, this is my favorite question to answer and to educate. Uh, when you think of like a Houston, Texas, that's oil and gas. When you think of San Francisco, that's like business to consumer technologies like Facebook and Twitter. Chicago, one of the reasons why we're kind of like passed over is because no one industry makes up four, more than 14% of our overall economy. Mm. As the most diversified economy of any city around the world, um, I think real estate is our number one industry with about 14%. And when you look at our architecture, our skyline, and just the size of the city, it makes sense. But there's an industry, there's manufacturing is well represented, um, technologies, healthcare, life science. It's movies are a fast growing industry, or studios are actually, I should say, going back to that, when you talk about the Hollywood in that, the original Hollywood back in the 20s was Chicago. Charlie mm. Chaplin. The, the famous silent film actor had his studio in the north side of Chicago. So that like studio mm. part of our DNA. So it's a lot easier to talk about a, in, like answer an industry question than to try to talk about broad yes. Chicago because it's so diversified. Yes. And, and I've also made some observation about the media scene in Chicago. Um, I've not been able to put my hand on it. But there's something incredible about Chicago that if you go big in Chicago, in the media, you're likely to go national. Yeah. Like it's like go big in Chicago, then you go national. <clears throat> For example, um, I used to get on WVON, which is the urban t um, radio station. And when I read about that radio, because I'm, all, I'm still studying the city, I'm still trying to really understand how it functions. That's, that's something I do really well about. And you know, the story was when any music, um, new music is released, the way you get it national is to play it on WVON. <laughs> like, like when the, 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 the Chicago people can buy your music or buy into your sound, yeah. then, then, then the, it's like a good test. It's almost like Oprah as well. If Chicago <laughs> can buy Oprah, you know, and buy into that, they, then it's easier to syndicate and get it national. There's just something about, and I think maybe it's back, back to, um, I think Chicago in a way represents a lot of the rest of US. Mm -hmm. You know, the diversity and all of that. If you can get people in Chicago to buy into something, like maybe President Obama, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you, you can go national from Chicago. I don't know. I'm, I can't put my hand on it. I think one of the reasons why Chicago has such an ability when think like the new the new media, the new big thing is the app cameo where mm -hmm. celebrities can do a drop in for, you know, a fee. Well, that's that's a Chicago startup that's built and innovated here in the city. I think, though, one of the big reasons why you see so much American from Chicago mm -hmm. is capital of the Midwest. So it's not just this little bucket of New Yorkers. Really, when you look at the Midwest, you've got all these incredible universities, 
You got University of Michigan in Ann Arbor, University of Wisconsin, Madison, it, it, I, University of Iowa. Chicago is a magnet for all those young people. And so mm-hmm. start their professional careers and come online. They often do it here because of the economic opportunities, the lifestyle are so much greater than where they're sitting in their other states. And so you start to get that influence of Michigan and Indiana and Missouri and Iowa, Wisconsin, Minnesota, all converging in Chicago and really creating, you know, it's not, it's not just urban. What we're pulling in is suburban, it's rural, it's exo urban. It's every part of America kind of converges here and enjoys itself. And oftentimes it's not just Chicago. They'll end up in my hometown, which is farm suburban. But then come to the city and take advantage of all the amenities and media. The city, yeah. I really think it's the pull that Chicago has for such a wide population of America kind of feeds into that uh, theory you have. Right. And and I look forward to even growing our business to business engagements, not just mm-hmm. talking about it, but actually making things happen, whether in healthcare or technology or movie. I There's a lot of interest that has grown, right? Um, even in our network and even beyond, I've had government officials literally tell me, when COVID is over, we're coming to the city, Chicago. <laughs> like, <clears throat> we want to explore. We've heard you talk about Chicago a lot. Like, you know, we, we want to come. Um, I, I've had people in particular um, that manage like the exports more in the so there's something happening now in the creative industry in Africa mm-hmm. with music, the sound, um, yeah. that they're going international. I always teach people to think about the local, regional, and international yeah. markets. And a lot of movie artists, they're looking for those collaborative opportunities or co-production opportunities yeah. where they can come to Chicago, shoot some side of the movie, go back to Africa, shoot some, and then, you know, um, you know, show it here because there's a the other thing they're trying to get into is the diaspora yeah so the diaspora is a huge buying uh, group of people um to the african continent and they're you know they're, they they remit <laughs> some of them remit um amount of money that actually s- surpasses the gdp of the country yeah. So the, the the African diaspora, think about the diaspora in Chicago. That movie, if produced in Chicago, the first set of people to watch it will be the diaspora. They'll go yeah. out there. It's like the Black Panther. It's like they're asking me, touring. I want an outfit from Africa. Like, we want to be a part of this. So that's something that I see is going to keep growing. And I think Chicago has an opportunity to capture that demand for co-production. and this. Afro, it's like a growing Afrocentricity. It's not just the first, so there's the first generation African, like myself, but there's also um, a new drive for, um, you know, African Americans. I, I, I don't want to say to you, I'm following you. Do you know the difference, right? The, people don't know, people call everybody African Americans, but oh, there's yeah. a distinction. Yes. <laughs> there's a distinction because I, I have closer connection to the continent then, than yeah. than yeah exactly so but now there's something called like the year of return there's a lot of reconnection to those that have never connected to the continent there's now bridges being bri- being built yeah. through through culture through commerce through tourism that you you see uh, some of the big names actors and acon they are reconnecting back to africa and they are serving as bridges and that is driving commerce. Yeah. There's now a demand for Afrocentric products. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Music, sound. Um, and those of us that capture it, it's it's just unique opportunities for us. So I'm I'm all over that right now. You can just see, you know, how no, my brain is percolating like a boiling pot of water. Uh oh yes. I was having a conversation um with one of our film companies called Cinespace a few weeks ago. And he made up. He made a comparison that I think is really appropriate, um, and I can kind of add personal anecdote and experience to that. He said content is the number one thing Americans manufacture right now. Whoa! A baby as a uh, millennial, um, like I am both basically tech native. My phone is literally tied to my hip, where my 
22 month old will take it and do this. Like she's making calls or she actually, we watch YouTube videos when we brush her teeth in the morning. She <laughs> don't pause and rewind the YouTube video so she can watch more longer. So like I'm incredibly tech savvy and it makes sense that we make like my whole world is tied to YouTube, um, Spotify, Stitcher, not so much TikTok. That's my wife's game, but it's all this <laughs> generation that keeps coming. Mm. You don't want it just to be personal experiences in a world in which it's easy. Today I was uh, messaging with our uh, friends and partners in China on WeChat. I don't have a problem finding, getting connected with these people. It's finding them. And I think that's the mm. Meet digital transformation is allowing us is not to just focus on, oh, there's this cool thing happening in my neighborhood, which is good to know, but also what's the cool thing in Africa? How can I be ahead of the trend? Like, I think back when I was in college, all, all the like time I spent not studying and trying to find the latest song from whatever performing artist was the coolest. So I could be ahead and could be like in the know and impress my peers. Like that's what you want now. And like to be able to wow. to the content generation, whether that's sound, whether that's uh, production of apparel, whether that's movies and cinema, there's so much out there and it's so much easier because of the cost effectiveness of getting your product online. That wow. really is that opportunity for African creators to get their story, get their vision, get their creative outlook here in America. Absolutely. And there is a, a mindset shift, though, that I'm having to make with them. Mm -hmm. They've always had this, if we build it, people would come yeah. versus you going. <laughs> that's, the, that's the shift that I'm having to tell them. And I have to say it in simple ways, like there's a digital marketplace you have to get into. If you want to buy, if you want to sell, whether it's your product, whether it's your services, you need to get out of your comfort zone and you need to immerse yourself in that space. <clears throat> and that's why we build this network because the results we're seeing is immediate. Like as easy as logging in, you immediately gain access to a group of people that has always, ex you've always existed, but you've not been in proximity. So if you're not in proximity of your potential buyer, of your potential partner, then you're just talking to the wind. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it goes back to your, the network and having that network there, it's there together because it's not just one of the things I will tell businesses when we wrap up a call is, yeah, we'll do X, Y, and Z for your deliverables. But like, I need to know what comes next for you because a, a follow-up conversation with the introduction under X is not going to do it. You are, there's a, a hundred more, a thousand more companies trying to do a similar approach what's your strategy how are you going to remain mm -hmm. persistent and in touch and build that relationship over the long run it's not going to take this next introduction will not be the golden ticket you need it's what's your okay how are you going to use this over the next few months to really build your brand build right. your trust factor and take advantage of this introduction so that it is more beneficial to you in the long run exactly and the other beautiful thing that is happening at Nazaru is we are, we are a go-to resource for all different types of people. We now play a unique role that it's so easy for, say, the Ethiopian embassy to say, Toy, we're doing this. Can you help us share it with your network? You know, it's like, this is a document. This is what we're trying to do. Like, they send us so much information. And with the network, I'm always constantly sharing the latest, greatest, because I don't want to, it, it's, it, when we all are in the same place, it becomes easier for us to give the, the latest updates, to say this is what's going on, to point people in the right direction. That's now part of the service that we offer. And then it's the other thing we're working on now is what we call like meet and greet. Mm -hmm. Because um, after the trade with Africa, the next one, I'm going to set up more like a meet and greet where we'll bring in maybe ambassador this or trade commissioner. We bring them into the membership and we just set up live conversations because that conversations have to happen. That's what I'm finding. It's like people are just talking, but they're not like, <laughs> they're not engaging. They're not, they're speaking to the wind and nobody's hearing them. The reason I also built a lot of the platforms we built is because I kind of know how to get attention for myself. 
right? <laughs> but a lot of people don't. <laughs> I've seen the list of high-level dignitaries you roll with. Yeah, but but it's it's more of I know how to scream. Yeah. Because it's noisy <laughs> out there. Like I know how to get what I want. Like I'm banging on doors literally like give me what I want like <laughs> I need you to show up. Yeah. Um so yeah. but that's what it takes. <laughs> yeah. Well I the one of the things that I found with the digital world so last year um when we realized the pandemic was not going to be a short-lived three months experience and it was going to be something that was going to carry on with us. We pivoted a lot of the international strategy we had, which was outbound mission trips, inbound delegations, and building those face-to-face -face relationships to digital and leveraging the fact that we had really strong working relationships with folks around the world. And so we did seven, seven international virtual, we'll call them summits. Uh, we did, like with Hamburg, Germany, Osaka, Japan, London. Um, I think London we did two initiatives with, China, and then I think Darmstadt, Germany was the other one that we did last year. And they were great. They were, early on, they were the novelty that, oh, look like, wow, they're putting together this Chicago, China summit on investment policy. Mm. But the part that was missing that I don't know if digital summits can ever replace it, is that connectivity where you are able to meet and like, I, I, my favorite way to do a meeting, like, and it's probably the worst use of my time is when it's a one-on-one -on -one conversation because you can get it, you can follow threads, you can dig into something a little bit deeper that's of mutual interest or of curiosity and say, oh, actually, yeah, we can do X. I wouldn't have thought we were gonna have this conversation, but we can support you on this item and I don't know in those kind of the virtual summit format, if you're able to get into that meet and greet that often is that baseline, that foundational level of a business relationship. Yeah. And that's why what we now do, we take it to the next level of that coaching and, and holding because it's the rules of engagement that is breaking, like the, the failure rates. If I can say that, because I also come, I have a background in manufacturing and quality and all that. So if I can use that phrase of, you know, in quality management is like failure. What's going on is that, and I've done this in the past where I'll make introduction and I'll walk away from that conversation. Like, mm -hmm. oh, now you know each other, you should be good. <laughs> no, it doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work. It, it doesn't work. I the number of times I've now, like I've started doing the same thing and I'll preface to be like, this is, this is the path I think we need to start on, but I need you to keep me up to date on what that conversation looks like. Um, and you know, being the, about the most quintessential Chicago, when you can imagine, I use football, American football analogy, <laughs> uh, describing, you know, comparing the success to the Chicago bears, which they've not been very good versus <laughs> the Kansas city chiefs, which are really good. To describe like hey i need like help me i can be a resource i'm here for you this is what they asked me to do but keep me in the loop like uh, tell me how that conversation went tell me where i was wrong and we can help build you and guide you through this process because we want to see your business grow we want to see you recognize chicago for the the business friendly environment that it is the cultural the the welcoming community that it is but i gotta i gotta have feedback because this is what i think is right yeah it's a partnership, really, more so than anything. Right. And I, I think the other question I would have, and this is me learning from you because you've been in this economic development. I just stumbled in. All I wanted to do was trade. Like, let's buy it. That's all I wanted to do. And then when I stepped into it, I was like, oh, economic development. Oh, there's a whole lot more. You know, you have to build this dialogue around the transaction you're actually trying to have. Like, the way to actually grow those numbers and those transactions is actually grow to grow the pool. That, which is why what I do is so difficult. Is like, I say people are trying to either fish with a fishing rod. That's what most people are doing. Yeah. I'm casting a wide net. Mm -hmm. I'm casting a wide net, I'm drawing it in, and then I'm like, what type of fish did I just catch? <laughs> well, and what like, with that too, like what kind of fish are in here, but also like what trash did I pull up? What bicycles randomly in this what like tired did somebody leave in here and it's yeah it's a very 
we're strategic around. Um, so our big strategic plan was Chicago last summer at the end of July was the first major U.S. city to publish a uh, economic recovery plan. Wow. We call it the recovery task force, and I'm happy to share it on LinkedIn with you. Make sure. Yes, you yes, yes, please. Those are the type of things I want to go down. <laughs> oh, it's, it'll, you'll enjoy it. It's, so um, a group of civic business philanthropic leaders were convened in late April to address the COVID recession and how we've come out. Uh, George Floyd's murder happened um, mm. early or late May. And so then the program became about how do we have a more equitable recovery for all? And so mm. recovery task force um, outlined 17 recommendations for a more wow. resilient and sustainable Chicago moving forward. And so the recommendations, it's everything that a strategic plan should be. It touches on uh, youth and youth or youth services, mental wellness, healthcare, worker, and then for world business Chicago and where we kind of care about uh, five, six industries. So world business Chicago was asked to implement the recommendations for manufacturing, food, mm. culture, healthcare, life sciences, and transportation, logistics, supply chain, that's a somewhat broad category. And then H headquarters, corporate centers is those types of return. And then the sixth one that we're not directly part of, but are supporting is bringing more film and studio space to Chicago. And so those industries are all part of what we think there's a job for everyone in mm. those sectors. It doesn't need to have a four year degree, a PhD. You can have a GED or an associates or even a certificate in a lot of those professions within manufacturing and be able to get yourself onto a path to the American middle class into a career that allows you to build wealth. Fantastic. With that, you're able wow. to see opportunities where you can plug businesses in. Um, and the beauty of this is the world, those are all industries that the whole world wow. is in healthcare. This is the health pandemic. So healthcare is growing. Our food wow. supplies are under you know, constant reevaluation and assessment and how we eat, how we consume foods. And so the whole strategic plan of how Chicago is moving forward within those kind of targeted industries is an approach that we've really never done before to have expertise and deep wow. knowledge so that if it is a conversation someone wants to have about manufacturing, well, there's someone on my team who actually came from John Deere and spent 10 years working for John Deere and knows literally so much where it's like, I, you lost me. Like, Wow. Wow. I, I see. Wow. There's something there that we might dig deeper because, um, so my background in Walmart and all of that, when it comes to distribution, a lot of people may not realize like Walmart probably distributes more movies than anybody else <laughs> in the world. And one thing that they launched a couple of years ago in Bentonville, which I lived in before, was Bentonville Film Festival. Uh Gina Davis and it was big massive and it was designed around diversity so women um, and diverse voices the move the and the winner actually has guaranteed distribution through Walmart oh cool that's an awesome and a lot of people still don't know about it it's the, I think the best kept secret it shouldn't be a secret um, of Bentonville, it's called BFF, Bentonville Film Festival. And the first year it launched, which was like, ooh, maybe six, five, five years ago, it's still, it's still very new. Um, so those are things that a lot of the media industry in Africa, they target um, Toronto Film Festival. That's where they go to showcase their movies. Um, they target, obviously, the one um California and all of the... All the <laughs> That's a natural, but I think you know there's an opportunity there. I don't know what's going on in that space in 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 Chicago. I think Chicago has the opportunity to blow that up, um, but people don't know. Just in the cycles which I move, people don't think of Chicago as an epicenter for the creative industry. I think that there's an opportunity there. Um, I, think I was watching so nerd, uber nerd, like Marvel. Marvel and uh, the DC Batman Superman trumped the basketball last weekend. It's mm. 
watching the Justice League movie that was re- released mm. for long hours, and I didn't know he was filmed in Chicago. My like favorite superhero is Batman, and there's scenes of him standing, looking basically with his back to the lake, looking over mm. Millennium Park where the being the big bean is. And I was like, oh, that's Chicago. I didn't know this was filmed here. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I, there's so much opportunity. Yeah. One of the things we found as we've been implementing that recovery task force report is that oftentimes sh- Chicago doesn't do a good enough job bragging mm. about the excitement, the enthusiasm, the energy that is in the city. We, there's like, we started calling it the Midwest ethos where mm. people in the Midwest, that that's, you know, where they've been born and raised in American heartland. You go to work, you do a good job you say thank you and then you go back and repeat Mm -hmm. you don't get up on your pedestal and kind of brag really promote and that i think has hurt us in telling the opportunities for the creative sector for Mm -hmm. my language any of these other sectors that chicago's the place you need to be it's not this it's not the city that stopped existing on your radar when michael jordan last took a jump shot there's (laughs) an opportunity here and look at all the success we've had yeah World Business Chicago is doing this year, just trying to help the awesome stories that exist inside the city. I think it takes somebody like myself, an outsider, Mm -hmm. really, to be able to say, wow, like, hmm, this is like. (laughs) It it helps too when you have a person like you who's not from here who takes for granted the Mm. how awesome Chicago is. And um, Mm. one of the comparisons I have is. I grew up in the, about 60 miles west of Chicago and kind of suburban farm town that where they both merge. Uh, and then early on in my economic development career, I got a job in Austin, Texas, mm. which is the place that everyone in my generation wants to move to. We, mm. wife and I moved down there. We lived there for five or six years. Wow. Um, but then we wanted to come home and it was after coming home for Christmas in 2016 after the Cubs had won the world series and seeing Christmas in Chicago, the skyscrapers being in the city, it was like, wow, this is such a, there's so much here. And for the enthusiasm and hype that Austin gets, I was like, the no. <laughs> of what, like they're not even, they're not even getting out of oh. the, the first floor of when you compare house sizes to Chicago and so it does help when you're an outsider, you can see it and I haven't spent here. Don't you can not take for granted how cool Austin is. And for you, incredible that the partnership we have, because you're telling leaders are like when you said, like you've got all these dignitaries who want to come and see the city that you've been representing for two, three years now. Yeah, oh. like I'm I'm like a, an, of, an official ambassador. Wherever oh. I go, <laughs> like honestly, like even when I left Arkansas, they've asked me to come back. I'm like, okay, let's see. But that's just something about me is like, I love to tell stories. My story, the story of where I live, the story of my people. Um, I, I love to connect with other people. I think that's the power. It's a natural, since I've left Walmart and built my own company, I've realized that I've actually leaned more on my natural giftings. Yeah. I don't know if you, like, it's almost like, you, 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 I didn't go to school to learn how to work with people. <laughs> you know, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and the success, the success of what I do actually um, is determined by how I can connect with people, how I can relate, how I can listen better, how I can understand what you, what drives you and what drives me and how to design partnerships and how to give and take. You know, that's kind of like the beauty when you strip away all the technical jargon, because there's a lot of heavy lifting from a technical infrastructure standpoint, but the fun side of it is really storytelling and connecting with connecting with humans, and, I, and that's that's it. I could not agree more. I so I got I have a master's degree in political science, um, and so like a lot of education I paid for. And the thing that has always striked me most about this career is how the the master's degree that I got was when I was a teenager watching my family 
interact with customers behind the cash register as they were closing and saying goodbye and those personal touches. And um, again, the flower shop is kind of the guiding, should I do this? Would this help them? And one of the things that was part of the vernacular that my mom raised me on was build bridges. Don't mm -hmm. think build bridges. Every conversation is a chance for you to help someone connect with someone. And that has been like the storytelling, the personal wow. like, my grandma always said that this people love to talk about their businesses, what they do, their family. And yeah. it's so, like, that's my favorite part of this world. I get to live in is the seven to 10 conversations I'll have in a day, all arranged. And it's just yeah. a cool convergence of, Oh, yeah. this is in your world. Oh, I should somebody yeah. so just that we all for as much as we talk about for the American perspective, we talk about kind of the pulling apart of our, Part mm. and how we're really not as connected. We actually, when you sit one on one, we're yeah. actually really yeah. all living the same experiences. Exactly. If we would just slow down enough to to hear each other, right? Wow. So I'm, I'm looking at time. Our conversation doesn't end here. Obviously, we've just given yeah. people an opportunity to listen in. Thank you for your partnership. Um, <laughs> I'm putting together plans for the next Trade with Africa Summit. Definitely, we'll see how we can craft something in there to yeah. bring some more conversations around Chicago, Africa. I need to keep, it's almost like I'm a scientist. Like, let's keep tinkering with that <laughs> until we, <laughs> it's like, mm, there's something there. There's something there. Let's figure it out. The, but I can uh, figure it out. <laughs> so my, like, I love what I do, um, but then my, like, my real love is my wife, JJ, and my daughter, Rinder. Aww. Rinder is a 22-month-old toddler. Mm. We are, her and I's big uh, connection point is Sesame Street. <laughs> it's like Bye. easy. It's easy on Saturday to like put that on, let it Cookie play. Monster. <laughs> oh God, she loves Cookie Monster. And oh, my dad food. used to call us that. Like when you're eating, like as a child, you know, <laughs> Told last rush it up. Like, are you a cookie monster? monster just shoveling it in. Um, our big thing though that she's learned, and this is Sesame Street. So <laughs> per because everything Sesame Street does is actually really applicable for adults. <laughs> I encourage anyone watching to go like <laughs> once we finish, go check out Sesame Street's YouTube page because the lessons are invaluable, not for, <laughs> year -olds, but for 33 year olds too. Is I um I wonder what if let's try. <laughs> and so, like that's in our house when there's something we want to work on it's Rinder, i want what if and then she'll go try okay <laughs> so be like sesame street and keep tinkering and being a scientist awesome and, and my next call <laughs> my next meeting is calling but I'll, I'll call him back it's actually one of this um amazing important economic stuff as well so that's great so watch out for trade with africa summits everybody mm -hmm. should it's going to be amazing i'm designing something you know um experiential it's very very fantastic so yes. that would also be an opportunity to dive deeper into the chicago africa exchange what opportunities there for chicago it's like bilateral trade chicago businesses that want to expand to Africa and African businesses that want to explore and do business in Chicago as well. So any parting word as we, as we wrap up? Yeah. Um, thank you so much for the, like this awesome conversation, oh. being an, an invited guest to the live stream. This is such an awesome program that you have. And I feel just touched that oh. you would me to the depth of. Come on. Uh, and then just as a final note, I am on the trade with Africa network. So if anybody would like to reach out to me directly, all my contact information, get all the updates. So you can easily find me on that platform as I am there. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I know it's, there's so much going on in there, I know, which is fantastic. For me, my plan now is just to add more value. Yeah. We're adding more value, meet and greet, um, coaching, training, masterclasses. Because at the end of the day, my thing is about transactions. Mm -hmm. And I'm realizing that if you just leave people alone, the rules of engagement, they're not going to, they just, hi, hi, I like you, I like yeah, you. There's, it's, yeah, yeah. there's no definition. Yeah, so I'm having to um, engineer engineer that interaction as well. Yeah. So thank you so much. Such fun. 
Um, I look forward to continued engagement with you, learning more from you. You're such an inspiration as well. And thank you for just being open. You know, mm -hmm. that's where how we've been able to take our, our relationship or partnership to this level is because at the very beginning, it was like trade with Africa. Okay, Tony, help me understand what yeah so thank you for being open as that and thank you to everyone this will also go out to our newsletter so we'll blast it out a couple of places and more people will get to see because i know time difference and all of that but thank you so much thank, thank you. you have a wonderful wonderful day okay god bless thank you, sir. bye awesome Hi, lady, your body is a necessary. Oh.